Hey, what's, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Hey, so on this one, what I want to talk about is how to in a job the right way. Now, I'm not talking about just completing the work, completing the scope of work and getting paid and then you're done. I'm talking about there's issues, there's problems. Maybe you, uh, maybe it's a bad bid. Uh, maybe you can't find anyone else to do the job uh, as far as employees or workers. Um, that type of in the job, right? There's so many times where we have jobs, we run into issues, and we just want to walk away. As contractors, I find that very common for us to get into trouble and we just go silent disappear. I actually used to do that back in the day. I used to walk away, go silent, whatever it was financial, just, you know, something I need to respond verbally, just, you know, if it was easier for me to walk away, or even if it was tough for me to walk away, I walked away. I, I ignored the situation until it got worse, and I had to answer for it. What I'm saying is, um, don't do that. There's a way that you can end any situation. But the, the biggest part of ending it is communication, okay? You have to communicate. You have to converse with someone so you can end this on good terms, okay? There's projects we get into all the time where things are just not going right, right? Um, what if that be a miscalculation on materials, miscalculation on labor, uh, maybe a misunderstanding as far as what the scope of work agreement was. Um, um, but the, the biggest thing is, is not just, you know, just sending less guys, spending less money, getting cheaper material. You know, all this leads down a bad road because most times we're not fooling anybody okay i'm serious you're not fooling anyone okay we homeowners customers clients commercial wise residential wise like commercial i don't care what they know they read they can see it okay um everything we do is out in the open it's not like you're in the in the back room doing something when you're done we can see when you walk out we can see so when we do have those issues at hand, uh, you definitely don't want to want to walk away and get the board involved. Okay, that's the that's the extreme part of this. Okay, uh, most residential jobs, the homeowner can get the board, the homeowner will get the board involved if there's an issue. You never want the board to be involved in any issues you have with anyone. You always have to remember that the board is pro-consumer. The board is not for contractors. Even though we get our contractors license through the board, the board is there to protect the consumer, who we're doing the work for. You always got to remember this. Even the bond that the board has you pull out on you is for the consumer in case you don't meet your obligations. Your $15,000 bond that you have to pay to get your license is in case you do not meet your obligations as a contractor and they have to pull from that, okay? To pay the employees, to finish the job, right? To pay for insurance that you may have not got, that you didn't get for that particular job. That's what that is for. So you definitely don't want things to get to the board and you definitely don't want things to get out of hand because usually it gets out of hand, you wind up in court. Litigation is, oh my gosh. Being a contractor is sort of like being uh, a person with a motorcycle. Every time I hear about anything with a, excuse me, <clears throat> anything with a motorcycle, they always say it's not if you're getting an accident, but when. Same thing with lawsuits, with contracting. Uh, especially if you're growing, you're growing company, you know, you find yourself on uh, substantial projects, 
you're you're, you're bound to, to to not not so much you get into issues, but in the construction world, anytime there's an issue of litigation, everyone gets sued on that project. I don't care if you was on that project for a short period of time or a long period of time. If someone sues anyone on that project, we sue everyone. Okay. Um, so that's that's why I say it's 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 not if it's only when, especially if you're growing and you're doing a substantial amount of projects with high dollar value. Um, it's, you need to get some type of legal representation on your side uh, sooner than later. But how do we end these jobs that that we can we can foresee going bad? And that's the key. That's the key is looking at remember what now remember what I said about running the business. Running the business is about predicting. Okay. Uh, prediction is key. It's really a, uh, your best educated guess on where things need to go for the future, right? Um, and sometimes your educated guess is based on data, right? But as a small contractor, we don't have that. So you have to do an educated guess based on your gut, what you hear, what you read, what you know, the knowledge you absorb, the YouTube channels you watch. Okay, um, that was a plug, by the way. But you you gain that from that, and then you can kind of um, you know direct your company or take different turns or bring on different products, you know, that help you, uh, uh, you know, toward that bottom line, increasing it, right? But for those projects that will go back, why can't we sit down with our client? and lay out the terms to end this contract. There's no sense us now. Now, listen, ending the contract doesn't mean that you're not going to pay more. Doesn't mean you do not have to pay. Doesn't mean that your client will not have to pay you. Doesn't mean your client would not have to owe you anything. All I'm saying is, <coughs> excuse me, is coming to a fair agreement to get out of the contract before it gets bad. We know if we're going to flake out on this job. Okay, it's 2020. You can't get away from it nowadays. There's no sense trying to flake out on the job. Sending, we, we get to a point where we're sending less guys, where we're not having the right materials there. You know, we, we create this, this sort of thunderstorm to give us justification to say, hey, you know what? I'm out of this job. I'm leaving. Well, you have a contract. You have an obligation to be there. So why not sit down with the client before it gets worse? That's the best time is being proactive in this situation, sitting down, laying out the terms. Listen, this is what I'm faced here. This job is a bad job for me because I did miss this. I did not calculate for this. Or, hey, I am a little bit too busy to continue this work here. Whatever it may be, lay it out, be honest, and get it out. Now, you may come to an agreement, you may not. But getting it out may be the best result in this. Communicating this, because you always, every time I deal with issues, every time I have anything that I'm dealing with on the job, I all, and, and if, now mind you, if I'm a sub on the job, I always try to look at it as if I was the GC for that job. Because I have GC jobs to where I have subs, and the subs did things that I did not like. But those same things that they did is things that I have done in my career as well. So I try to practice what I preach. So you always look at it. What if you were that subcontractor? Do you want your sub just walking off that job? Friday is the last day I'll be here. Monday, I'm not showing up. But you won't know until I don't show up on Tuesday that I'm not coming back. No, if you use the GC on that job, you would like a heads up. 
Okay, at least give me a week. Hey, listen, I would like to call for a meeting here. And listen, if you're an owner, you have to remember you need to start at the top. Okay, bypass all those superintendents. I don't care if you talk to them every day. You need to go up to the top. You need to start at the top. You're an owner. You need to you need to position yourself to know that owner and be and 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 have that window open to where you can communicate with that owner especially if this is a, a company that you do work for quite often so you need to have that seat sit down talk about it hey let's figure this out i got this x amount of work left and you need to know your numbers okay we can't go in there with a bunch bunch of fluff you go in there with a bunch of fluff and you run into the wrong type of individual and you're going to get screwed buddy so know your numbers, bring some numbers to the table. Hey, this is what I have left. This is the work I have left. I cannot continue to do this job, especially at this rate. I'm going to have to downside for X and X and X reason. I know that you may not agree, uh, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, but this is the circumstances that I'm faced with. Can we find a way that I can terminate or lessen this agreement on fair terms i don't if you owe money right if you have been paid overpaid for the for the amount of work that you have done then you need to pay money back and you figure out what that amount is and you pay it back so you can end this contract on good terms but now listen to this a lot of times you get to this stuff early on it can be a lot peaceful conversation than getting toward it after you have you know cut back on crews cut back on materials cut back on time that you're on that job and those those type of telltale signs address it before then now there's some companies out here that if you do approach them about this they're going to shut the door in your face <coughs> excuse me the owners are going to um, be quite upset at you. Probably not even talk to you. May, may not even give you the opportunity to even talk. May not even give you the opportunity. May even know that you're losing on the job and accepted you accepted your price because they knew it was a losing bid. Those, job, those type of jobs, you really can't do nothing about it. You're just going to have to suck it up, eat it up, and shut up. That's it. You know, you have to avoid those jobs and make sure you bid them right. Like I always say, there's no bad jobs, there's only bad bids. So, hey, my construction entrepreneurs, wanted to share that with you. So we're not just walking away from these jobs and putting a black eye on the construction industry as a whole. I'm going to let you go with that. Remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. And we'll catch you on the next one, my construction entrepreneurs.